the Debt Warriors listening, and welcome back to another episode of Millennial Debt Domination. I'm your host, Katie Fata. A debt management plan is carried out by a nonprofit credit counseling agency, such as Navicore Solutions, that helps you lower your interest rates and monthly payments depending upon which credit accounts you have. Today, I'll be joined by one of Navicore's clients who is currently enrolled on her own personalized debt management plan, Kristen M., Kristen and I will be talking about her situation before she started the debt management program, how she accumulated debt, shame she feels surrounding her debt, and much more. Now let's get to my interview with Kristen. Hi, Kristen. Thanks for being on the podcast today. Hello, of course. I'm super I'm ex- excited. Yeah, I'm yeah. excited to talk to you. I'm always excited to talk to our clients and hear more about them and hopefully your story influences others. So to start, can you tell me about your situation before you started our debt management program and how you accumulated your debt? Well, I got my first credit card when I was in college. I listened to somebody who I really trusted and who, you know, met well and had encouraged me to open up a card. It was actually like a student credit card in order to start building my credit. And so I started there and just started putting groceries, things that I was already having to buy on that card and would pay it off. And then one summer I really needed tires and it was like $800. And even after working three jobs in college and doing everything I could um, to get by, I was still struggling financially and had really no backup at all, no savings, nothing. So I'm like, well, I have this limit on my card. I might as well just put these tires on them and then I'll take a few months and pay them off. And at that point I was still on a, you know, I didn't, I wasn't accruing interest every month. So it was like 0%, um, the introductory offer. Then a few months later, it was like, Hey, if you, uh, if you can get here to Florida, I had some family friends that were going, just get your flight. We'll pay for everything else. And as a broke college student, I was like, yeah, this sounds great. So it was another thing. It was a flight. So it started out as being, I think a really you know, good thing. I had the best intentions with starting this credit card, but um, it eventually accumulated and led to, you know, that point where the 0% interest was over and I was looking at several thousand dollars on this credit card. And so I think it was just years of me not really being in reality, just thinking like, well, you know, when I graduate, I'll make more money or you know, when I, when I get to this job, I will be making more money and I can pay it off. And it just was never really me sitting face to face with my dad. It was just thinking that my situation was going to get better. And somehow miraculously, I was going to get out of it. And yeah, and I didn't. So (laughs) until this past year, I was really, I think, still in denial about it, not really talking about it at all. I really had to sit myself down and look at my debt in the face and, and come up with a plan to, to tackle mm-hmm. it. So, yeah. And yeah. Do, do you think that you were maybe relying on credit cards too back then maybe? Definitely. Yeah. yeah. I mean, not initially when it started, but mm-hmm. definitely at some point um, I, I got played, I would say <laughs> by these credit credit card offers, which I knew inherently, like I, I knew that these were not good. They weren't, a great thing to rely on. I knew that. I think it just was a really good out for me in certain situations. So there were certain situations like the tires, like I mentioned, right. talk about a lot. Like that was a that was a good thing. I needed tires and I didn't have a backup. And you know, that may have been if it was just that, that may have been a great way to utilize a credit card and pay it off and come up with a plan. My problem was I just didn't have a plan. Mm, yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. I mean, that's true because you said you, you opened this credit card, your first credit card in college. So I just, Mm -hmm. I feel like there's a lot of expenses you may not be expected in college, um, including, you Mm -hmm. know, well, so did you also have student loans from college in addition to this credit card debt? I did. Yes. 
I had student loans and I thankfully didn't have to take out a ton of student loans when I did my bachelor's degree when I was an undergrad, but I did have some. And again, that was just another thing. Like, I'll worry about that later. To me, the credit card debt was always more in the forefront of my mind. Student loan debt was always Mm -hmm. way, way, way in the back. Mm -hmm. And yeah, that's something I've also recently had to face is how much student loan debt I have. So. Right. Because I feel like student loan debt is almost more normalized than credit card debt. You know what I mean? But yeah. it's still mm-hmm. debt. You still have to pay it back. So absolutely. Def- so yeah. it definitely is super daunting. So you had mentioned before, you know, you had to charge tires on your car and then a family family. Uh, offered you to come and you know visit them in Florida so that's a flight other than that what were you using credit cards for in addition to emergencies and travel were you using it for like your everyday needs yeah it got to a point where I was and I it must have been after college quite a bit after college I had this card that I got cash back on and um again (laughs) <laughs> theoretically it's a great idea if you put your expenses on it and you get this cash back and then you you know as long as you pay it off each month well whenever I would hit like a financial hiccup it was one of those things where it's like well I'll just I'll just figure it out next month or I'll figure it out a few months later and so what was meant to be again a good thing just really wasn't and I did get some cash back on that card so that is good right <laughs> um I remember opening a a balance transfer credit card, though, to take care of that debt. And yeah, I mean, I had some plans along the way, but none that were really concrete that would really like solve my problem of getting out of debt completely. So so you opened a student credit card and you might not even have known a lot about credit cards and debt and even like budgeting Mm -hmm. saving. Do you think that's because of lack of personal financial education growing up you are millennials so (laughs) that speaks to some of that yeah I mean first of all who gives a credit card to an 18 year old that's what I want to know (laughs) I mean it's happening all the time but I I wish this you know credit card I wish um, even my student loans like I wish there would have been a more in-depth training education something on do you really understand what this is, you know, what you're getting yourself into. No, I I grew up in a family where my parents worked really, really, really hard. And really all I ever learned in terms of credit cards was that they're bad. <laughs> Just mm-hmm. don't do it. I mean, not really knowing why other than people are dumb, they can't manage their credit, like that kind of thing. Um, and so I just didn't know a whole lot about what it means to have a savings and um, although again, my parents were, I think they did what they could and they, they helped me open my first savings account. Like there just wasn't an in-depth discussion ever about, Hey, let's talk about your finances. Let's talk about when you go to college and all of that. I signed up for a stock market class when I was in high school thinking like, I'm going to actually learn about investing. And this class was such a joke. It was the football coach, one of the football coaches was a teacher and it was mostly just the football guys in the class. And then there was me and it was just such a joke. We would watch clips on the TV. It just was not mm-hmm. at all what I had, had hoped it would be. So definitely yeah. think that lack of ed- like lack of education around finances led to me making some some financial mistakes. Yeah. Do you believe that yeah. also like led to your accumulation of debt as well? I think so. I think it's, I think it's complicated. You know, money is, is a complicated issue. I think that for me personally, like it was kind of just an avoidance thing too. So struggling with anxiety, I've struggled with anxiety in my whole life. I think avoidance is very much part of that cycle. So like I knew it was there, but I just kept putting it off, kept putting it Mm -hmm. off, kept putting it off. So yeah, I think that the the lack of education was a huge influence. Um, There's tons of other factors of Mm -hmm. why. why. Yeah, absolutely. And it is so crazy how there's no there. I mean, back when we were in high school, there was no Mm -hmm. classes for it or anything and nothing even about like student loans or anything, which is so crazy because they should probably inform kids about that before they end up taking out student loans or opening credit cards and such. So yeah, maybe it didn't lead directly to the debt, but having that knowledge may have, you may have changed some things in your life. 
personal right. finance wise. And like simple budgeting wise, mm-hmm. I I definitely knew how to do that. You know, like I taught myself how to do that and used a couple apps to help me budget. So I, like that was taken care of, but it was more of the like, hey, if you don't have a backup, what happens when life comes up? Um, what happened, you know, just a few years ago, I had I had knee surgery from a skiing injury. And so, yeah, like who, who's expecting that, hey, you're going to have to pay like seven, eight grand toward this surgery. You know, most people aren't, aren't prepared for that or thinking of that. Right, right, exactly. Yeah. And if you would have had like maybe an emergency savings then, then you would have, but you probably yeah. might not even have realized that that's something you would have needed. No, so yeah, no. Perfectly yeah. healthy, healthy in my twenties. Well, I was at the time. Um, yeah, and yeah, why would I? Right, exactly. Why would I be thinking about this? Yeah. Do you think there's any shame associated with with debt? And if so, do you feel shame surrounding your personal debt? Yeah, shame. I think lives in the darkness, you know, and it wants it wants to keep you there. It wants to keep you believing lies about yourself about your situation that you're never going to get free of it all of that so I think there's shame in my life and I I definitely think it's associated with that I mean even even to the point where I just started talking about um having credit card debt this year well and student loan debt I suppose but I just really started talking about it this year and there are people that are close to me that still don't know about it because it's it's hard to talk about. So you think you felt some shame talking to your friends and family about your financial problems? Absolutely. Why, yeah. Why did you feel like, why did you feel like that? I mean, again, I think, I think growing up, my parents did the best that they could and talked about money in a way that they could talk to me about it while they were still, you know, while they were going through their own money stuff and they were trying to figure out how to keep us afloat. But all I ever learned was that credit cards are bad and Mm -hmm. just don't do it. Just don't touch it. Just don't do it. And so the, I think there's so much shame around like, oh, I did something bad. Like I did this thing that I knew I shouldn't have done and I did it. And it's like feeling like a kid all over again. Mm -hmm. You know, Mm -hmm. my dad's one of the people who I haven't talked to about my debt and going to him and telling him, Hey dad, like I, I did this and I, I got myself into some trouble and, you know, even that just feels, it feels really scary. Mm-hmm. It feels really scary to do. Yeah. So, I feel like know. no matter what age you kind of are nervous, if you've maybe done something yeah. wrong to tell your parents, mm-hmm. so it is hard to open up about it, but have you open talked up. to your yeah. friends about your debt and do you think that they may have similar financial problems as you? Definitely. I think that was the cool thing about bringing things into the light and, talking about my debt is realizing how many people are currently struggling or have struggled in the past and how many people just said, yeah, me too. Yeah, me too, girl. How many people don't have an emergency savings? You know, when I talk about that and how I'm building that up now, people are like, wow, I can't believe you have an emergency savings. Like I would love to have that. So yeah, it it definitely helped because I think I realized how, how many people are struggling. And if you have, since you've opened up to your friends about your debt, have you recommended Navicor to them? Definitely. Yeah. (laughs) I, I thought when I had first heard about you guys, Mm -hmm. I had thought it might be a scam. So Mm -hmm. I was like, oh, I need to really do some digging. I need to look into this. But I, once I, you know, did some research, I realized like, no, this actually is a legit program. This is great. And so as I've been opening up again about this journey, it's been kind of exciting to tell people in a way like, yeah, I sort of messed up financially. Here's how I'm like fixing it. Here's how I'm coming up with a plan. And it, and it feels really empowering, honestly, to have a plan and to, and to be able to stick to it. When you kind of open up to your friends about it and about and telling them about Navicor, do you think some of them may have be like embarrassed to start the debt management program? What was kind of their reaction to Navicor? Honestly, for some, it was, wow, I wish I would have heard about something like this sooner for people who had just tackled credit card debt for years and was just, you know, throwing every last <laughs> bit of dime they were making towards their debt. Yeah. Or like um, when I talk about how you're able to like lower 
the overall interest rate and how much that saves. It's like, man, (laughs) for um, one of my friends, she's like, man, like I was paying so much money in just interest every month. Something like this would have been really helpful. Yeah. So I don't know of any friends who have like actually signed up yet, but I definitely have some that are thinking about it. Oh, wow. So what would you yeah. say yeah. to one of your friends if they were maybe embarrassed to start the debt management program? Mm, it's, hard. it's really hard to talk about it. I was in your shoes like recently. First of all, you have somebody to talk to me. But, That's always good. Yeah. But hey, like you're coming up with a plan and you, this is your story and you get to you get to talk about what you want to talk about with people. Um, and so I probably just also walk them through the process of like what that was like for me talking to somebody from the get go and how I just felt really reassured in that conversation that it was going to be okay. <laughs> it's going to be okay. There would be a plan and I could agree to it or not agree to it. Like I had that autonomy to decide if this was a good plan for me. So Let's so speaking about Navicor and your experience with Navicor. Let's yeah. talk about your initial call with Navicor. So, what was the deciding factor that led you to reach out to us, and what was the first call like? I started googling. I started doing some research beforehand, and you know, found the Navicor website, looked up on the Better Business Bureau some reviews, and thought, okay, like why not? So, when I had that first call, I talked to a very sweet lady who. I was like, hey, let's just talk about what your debt looks like. Let's talk about it. I'll come up with an estimate of what your plan might look like each month, what your timeline would look like, and just we'll just talk through all of it. And and as I was sharing some of my like balance information with her, I was like, I've never talked about this with anybody. Like this is so hard. And I just remember her being really kind and reassuring. And hey, like she even said, like I have a daughter that's around your age and. I imagine that this would be really hard for for her to tell me too. So, you know, thanks for telling me. And it felt like it was more therapeutic than I expected it to be. Um, And it was was really, really helpful. After that call, did you trust the process or were you feeling skeptical? Can you tell us how you felt after the, um, after your first initial call? Um, I definitely felt better. I was still feeling skeptical. It was kind of one of those things that felt, like too good to be mm-hmm. true. Yeah. And so, um, yeah, like I said, I searched the PBC website and the NFCC website. I didn't want to get trapped. Like right. I felt really trapped with credit cards. I didn't want to feel trapped in something that I didn't know anything about. Yeah, so then you felt confident enough to enroll into a debt management program and you are mm-hmm. new to the program. And although you're new, mm-hmm. do you see the light at the end of the tunnel? Are you confident you'll be able to complete your debt management program and then remain debt free? Absolutely. Yep. Yep. Having that one, although, I mean, it was the same when I was tackling credit, my credit card debt through my bank, I think just having that lump sum that just goes away, it just goes away every month. I don't even see it. It's so reassuring to me because I look at my bank statements and I can see those balances going down and I can see like, it actually feels doable. Like not only obviously is there a legitimate plan in place, but like there's a lower interest, all the things that just make it accessible for me and doable for me to be able to do this. It just feels, it feels really reassuring. And so even when there's been times that have come up where I'm like, no, I'm really low on this this month. Or I like, you know, again, need new tires, things Mm -hmm. like that. It's like, all right, I'm pulling for my savings. I'm Mm -hmm. pulling for my savings. I'm Or I'm going to do this extra thing this month, um, this extra side hustle to make money to pay for those things. Like credit cards just aren't aren't an option for me to use. Yeah. As you just mentioned, like going back to your tires. So that was an emergency savings and that puts you into debt. And you kind of just answered my next question. If you have an emergency now, how do you go about How do you tackle it? Do you have a, you have a savings for that rather than charging it on a credit card? Yeah, that's great. I do. Yeah. I have my money in a high yield savings. It's not, not a ton, not where I like would love it to be, but no, yeah. Yeah. I even have like buckets set up in it. So like this bucket's for tires, this bucket is, I live in Colorado. So Uh there's like, we always need tires, good, Mm -hmm. good snow tires to get to the mountains to ski. Yeah. Yeah. Um, That's great. 
buckets for a down payment on a house one day mm-hmm. like all those mm-hmm. those things so yeah. yeah, that's amazing. And even though I like how you mentioned, you said you don't have a lot in it right now. That's fine. Some having something in your emergency mm-hmm. fund is better than nothing. So, and you can yep. build it over time. I think it's great that you have something in there for now. And a high yield savings account is a great place to store your emergency fund. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So that's awesome. So what yeah. lifestyle changes have you made to ensure you won't end up in the same financial situation? Yeah, I think, I mean, it really started with, like I said, like sitting <laughs> sitting down, having a conversation with my dad (laughs) and with myself, just really telling myself, Kristen, you're not going to be in this situation again. Like Mm -hmm. you don't want to be in this situation again. And so putting some accountability in as well, um, just talking to, talking to some friends and not that they're going to like yell at me if I send money, but like, Hey, can you just help keep me accountable? Mm -hmm. Can you just check in? So I would say that's a big change that's been helpful to me, helpful for me. And then, yeah, sticking to a budget and actually sticking to it. I've had budgets for years and years and years, and it was just really hard to stick to it. But really like, this is your food money this month. Um, That means like you don't get to go out and have Mm -hmm. this expensive meal with your friends if you've already used all your food, you know, so Mm -hmm. really sticking to it and telling myself too, that this is a season. It's not always going to be like this, but in a season where I'm trying to tackle this debt left and right, like I need to be mm-hmm. conscious of what I'm spending. No, those are some great lifestyle changes, especially sticking to a budget. It's super hard to do that. So I'm proud of you mm-hmm. for doing that. And I love how you Thank said you. that you have an accountability, keeping, having your, telling your mm-hmm. friends to check in on you. That is super helpful because if nobody's checking in on you, you might think, mm-hmm. well, why do I need, you know, you might go off the rails faster. So, Absolutely. Yeah, you know, yeah. I think you're definitely on the track to not end up in the same financial situation after you finish a debt management programs. How have your views of money and your money behaviors changed since enrolling in the debt management program? I know you kind of mentioned not going on big dinners if you don't have the budget for it. Is there anything else? Yeah, I, I think I, I always am trying to balance this. I want to be responsible, but then I, on the other hand, I, I like. YOLO, (laughs) like I want to go and live my life and I want to go and go on vacations and do the things that do cost money. And I think for me, I don't see it as a, I don't see it as limiting, if that makes sense at all. I don't see money as limiting as I used to. Mm -hmm. I just see it as a, it is currency. It is like the thing that you need to do things, but it is also the thing that can keep you really bound up and in shame if you misuse it. Yeah, just I think like kind of releasing my attachment to money overall and recognizing that like I don't need to go on this extravagant vacation like every year in order to live my life. Like every single day I'm living my life. Well, it definitely seems like you have a better view on money now and you've changed your financial Mm -hmm. lifestyle, even though you are still new to the program. So yeah, we wish you luck on completing the program. And thank you so much for joining us on the podcast today. Yeah, thanks for having me. I I think your story will definitely inspire others. Exactly. I think Mm -hmm. it definitely will. So thank you again for joining me. If you're listening, you got this. (laughs) (laughs) You are just one call, maybe two away (laughs) from from conquering this debt. So don't Uh, be afraid. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you so much, Kristen. It's always great talking with Navicore clients and hearing how they've had success on the debt management program. Kristen went from charging her credit cards for emergencies to having an emergency savings in a high yield savings account. Although Kristen has felt shame surrounding her debt, she's felt comfortable opening up to her friends about her debt and realizing they're also millennials in the same position as her. They help hold her accountable while she changes her financial life. As Kristen said, being in debt is only a season. She's confident she will complete her debt management program and live a debt-free life. We wish Kristen success on the rest of her debt management journey. If you're struggling to pay off your debt on your own, check the description of this podcast to learn how to get started with Navicore Solutions. With that being said, that wraps up another episode of Millennial Debt Domination. Don't forget to subscribe to the podcast wherever you're listening. And if you're listening on Spotify or Apple Podcasts, please rate and review us there. I'll talk to you next time, Millennials, Gen Zers, and everyone else listening. Bye.